Welcome back everybody. I have just filmed a massively long rambly video talking about just stuff that I'm enjoying at the moment and uh, I'm sitting here and what I, and I, as part of that video I had said that I might go through some samples that I want to do some first impressions on and I didn't actually get time to do that because the video got very long so I decided to do that in a separate video and that is what this video is. So if you've clicked on this you obviously know that we're going to be talking about Maison VLA parfums today and I have six of their fragrances to try. I don't know if they have released any more since I got these samples. This house has been talked about quite a lot on social media and on YouTube and um, the first person I remember talking about them was Tara from Olfactor Files and she talked about them on YouTube, I think maybe a year ago, maybe 18 months, uh, it was a while ago. And I was waiting very patiently for our local perfumery to stock them. And they eventually did hit Australian shores. And as soon as they hit here, I did go and buy a bunch of the samples. And then, or all the samples I could get basically, and then, I got them and they consequently sat in a drawer until now, until this week, I should say. So I am going to go through my first impressions of the Maison VLA line. So if that sounds interesting to you, then please stick around. Um, if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Cherie and I mostly talk about perfume on this channel. And this year in particular, I'm talking about perfume in the context of not buying any perfume. I haven't bought any perfume since February, but I'm doing a no buy this year from basically February through to the end of the year, which encompasses mostly perfume, but a few other little things too. I do have a no buy video that I uploaded talking about all my rules. And so what I want to do this year is go through all of the samples and things that I have accumulated over the last few years and have not ever gotten to. So that is my goal for this year is to try and work through some samples, uh, get an understanding of what I really like and what is possible for me and um, and also to get a really good understanding of the perfumes that I already own because I do own a lot of perfume and my cat is meowing at me which means he probably wants to go out so let's get on with the video I can't remember I can't remember which one I tried <laughs> oh pauvre pauvre d'automne d'automne oh my god this is going to be a nightmare isn't it because they've all got really French names and then I'm going to have people complaining to me in the comments about how lazy I am for not learning how to say things. All right, well, let's... There is an app now, apparently, that you can download. Forget having to pronounce these things. I can't even spell the damn things. Oh, come on, really? Listen to this. Over the auto. No, that's not how you say it. Is there another, can I get a French person? All right. All right, I'm gonna try one more time. Just, I'm just gonna Google. Poop. Poop. So the first one is Poop Dutum. Or purple something. <laughs> so this is one of the ones that Sam from My World of Fragrance talked about in a recent Violet video, I think, and when she talked about it, I went, oh, I've got that. I've got a sample of it, so I must go try it. And so I actually did wear it a couple of days ago. What I like about this is the violet is really noticeable itself. You know, a lot of the time I feel like when I'm smelling something that's got iris and violet in it, that I'm just getting mostly iris and the violet is just the sort of airy powderiness that sort of weighs in on that fragrance. Uh, the perfumer for this one is Natalie Lawson. So what I get from this, and maybe it's just um, because I'm smelling it on paper, but I feel like I get, I get lots of iris, I get lots of that beautiful violet um, but the violet isn't candied. It, the violet reminds me, I mean, there is sort of 
this distant memory of insolence by Gelan, and I think it's just because of the uh, the violet. But the violet in here is not candied. It's very light. Um, it's actually not that sweet at all. Um, I feel like I feel like I'm getting something kind of marzipan-y from this, and maybe a little bit um, nutty. It's really strange. I really like it though, but I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'm getting something like marzipan or, or maybe a bit of a nuttiness, which might not make any sense because, I mean, marzipan isn't nuts, is it? Or is it almonds? Maybe it's almonds. I, I think I remember it also had really good longevity as well because I, I sprayed it a little bit on my hand and I felt like I was getting a really nice scent bubble from it, even though it was only from a sample vial um, for most of the day. So yeah, that's really nice. I don't know what the other notes are. Maybe I should look it up. Okay, I'm gonna look it up. Okay, well, according to Fragrantica, the fragrance notes are violet, iris, violet leaves, rose, musk, peach, plum, oak moss, and benzoin. Oh yeah, I could see how, I don't know if I would have picked that up as oak moss, but it does have like a, slightly vintage feel to it, I suppose. Um, I think maybe it's the benzoin that I'm getting that is making it seem nutty to me. Anyway, it's interesting. I, I want to spend more time with that just on its own. Nui. Nui. Oh. Nui. Nui. Oh, he can talk to me whenever he wants. Um, okay, so... <laughs> Uh, new, new air blue. So that is what this one's called. This is the one that Tara really loves. It's a iris dominant scent, I believe. So this is interesting because uh, when when I first tried this, I thought, oh, that's really nice, but it kind of leans a little bit more on the masculine side for me. Not that I wouldn't wear this, but I, because I already own Panthea Iris, um, I thought this leaned kind of more masculine than Panthea Iris. And it's interesting because Tara thinks the opposite. She said for her that she thought Panthea Iris leaned more masculine and this one more feminine. So yeah, that's really interesting to me. This has a brightness to it, so it's not as powdery as Panthea Iris um, and not as creamy either. So I feel like Panthea Iris has a lot more um, texture to it. This is a lot, uh, maybe this does have a bit of creaminess. I probably need to put it on my skin, but I don't really want to right now. So, but I, there is this brightness in it too, almost kind of like a fruitiness, but it's not really fruity. Yeah, I just want to say it does have, a, I feel like it has a fruity vibe to it, but not like strawberry or like fruity floral like you buy in a department store, but I feel like it has a brightness. I feel like it has a brightness to it that, um, that Panthea Iris doesn't necessarily have. Mm. Okay, well, let's look up the notes and see what's in it. Ah, okay. Okay, so the top notes are bergamot, lemon, orange blossom. Middle notes are iris and carnation. Ah, okay. Yep. And the base notes are white musk, benzoin and sandalwood. And I think I'm detecting the orange blossom, but it is coming off as citrusy. So, yeah, okay. All right. I do like this a lot. It's beautiful, but <clears throat> I still think I like Panthea Iris better. Sorry, Tara. Okay, so the next one, um, I don't know what I did with the strips. Here we go. The next one is Compliment. I think this is one that, oh, okay. I think this is one that a lot of people talk about. Holy smokes, yeah. Okay, I have, yep, it, it, this smells like, what does it smell like, Cherie? 
I feel like I want to say neroli. It's got that really French soapy vibe to it, but it's also very, very floral. Oh, no, it's reminding me of... Um, I used to go on holiday to Bali a lot when I lived in WA, in Western Australia, I should say. And a couple of times when I stayed in more high-end kind of locations, villas and things, the rooms were always immaculate and they would put, they would scent the rooms. And so I have a feeling that this smells a lot like that. It was like a soapy, jasmine-y kind of thing. Yeah, this is really nice. <laughs> I like this a lot. For some reason, I had it in my head that this, that compliment was a gourmand. I don't know where I got that from. This is beautiful. All right, I think, mm, I think this might actually be, this might actually, this might actually supersede Nuit, Nuit Bleu um, for me. A, a really beautiful, soapy sort of jasmine. And I feel like I'm getting neroli as well. Lots of other florals, but those are the ones that I get the most. I'm not even really getting any iris. Is there any iris in this? I'm not really feeling like I'm getting iris. Or maybe I am. It's, it is a little bit powdery. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. What is it? Let's look it up. <laughs> okay, so the top notes are orange blossom, palmer rosa, eucalyptus, violet leaf, and peony. The middle notes are tuberose, jasmine sandback, jasmine and freesia and ylang ylang, hawthorn and heliotrope. Holy moly, okay. Um, yep, and then the base notes are benzoin, hay, vanilla and flax. Wow, that is gorgeous. I love that. I love it. All right, I'm going to wear that one on skin next week. That's going on my to wear pile and see how I like it. And I'm just going to adjust this a bit because please excuse the mess in the background. But then Poppy, Poppy is there. She's tucked herself into the cushions after ripping apart her toy, which I'm going to have to clean up after this video. But in the meantime, I'm having a sip of wine. Next up is sketch all right I, I should have maybe I should have read up no it's probably good that I didn't read up on these beforehand actually I oh oh okay um okay Woo, okay patchouli definitely I'm getting lots of patchouli from this one this one's called sketch did I say that already yeah okay I'm getting lots of patchouli it's like powdery patchouli maybe a hint of sweetness Maybe a bit of resin, some kind of resin. Oh, it's a little bit, like it's just a little bit spicy. It's not, you know, it's not, not like a punch you in the face spicy and it's really delicate. I can't get over that patchouli. It's so light and powdery, but it's really noticeable. Wow. Oh yeah, I like that. I like it a lot. What is it? Okay, what's in it? Wow, see if I'd read the, the note listing of this one, I don't know if I would have thought that I would have liked it as much as I do. So there you go. Uh, so the top notes are nutmeg, pink pepper and bergamot. The middle notes are tuberose and rose. I'm not sure I'm getting tuberose, but I guess I do detect florals. The florals to me, a lot of the time, are hard for me to detect or distinguish from one another, except for that jasmine one in the last one, that was outstanding. But I, for me, I can get florals, I can detect florals, but maybe I just say, like it, I can't say which flower it is, but it, it has the effect of softening um, the other notes a little bit. But yeah, I wouldn't say that I could pick tuberose out of this. Um, anyway, so what was I, I said tuberose and rose, and then the base notes are Madagascar vanilla, patchouli and tonka bean. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, now that I think about it, I think it's the tonka. So I get the patchouli, and in the, in the opening, that patchouli is really, really noticeable. 
but I think the powderiness must be the Tonka. And now that I think about it, it does smell a little bit like Tonka. I'm not very good at detecting Tonka either, I don't think. I thought I was, but I don't think Tonka smells how maybe I thought it smelled. So I think I might, that it might be one of the raw ingredients that I have to try and get my hands on this year to sort of actually understand how that actually smells. But anyway, okay, so that one is Sketch. So the next one is Un Air, un air Dapogé. Dapogé. Um, that's how I'm going to say it anyway. Sorry, sorry, not sorry. I don't speak French and I don't think it's offensive. I also don't speak Dutch, right? And my surname is Dutch and that just confounds people. They, understandably so. It's, you know, it's a weird name. And then um, my first name, I get called Sherry or Cherry and hardly ever get called Sheree. <laughs> so, but it doesn't bother me. I don't know why people get so offended about it. It's like, it's not, it's not like people are deliberately going out of their way. Um, and yeah, I know people think it's, it's um, you know, unprofessional. And, hmm, I like that too. Okay, okay, this is, I'm gonna have to spray this again. I feel like I need, it's very light. I guess that would fit the name, on air, on air de apogee. This one's got me a bit stumped. I don't really know what I'm smelling here. Okay, so let me try and break it down. I feel like it smells a little bit green. It has a fuzziness, but I don't know if I would call it powderiness. Maybe like a suede and I don't know, maybe a couple of spices in there again. Wow, um, it's very interesting. Yeah, I feel like I, for me, the, what I mostly get from this is um, like a green suede. There was something in the opening that I didn't love as much, but it's, it's dissipated really, really quickly. So I'm not sure what that was. Shall we look up the notes? Okay, let's look up the notes. Oh, and it does appear that Natalie Lawson is the nose behind all of these, by the way. It's just in case you were wondering, because I stopped saying her name. Oh, okay. So it's tobacco. Oh, that could have been what I was smelling in the opening, actually. Tobacco sometimes has a weird... I don't know, it kind of gets me at the very top of my palette. It, it just has... it gives me a... sometimes it comes off a bit funny. And I think that's what I was getting in the opening. The notes are tobacco, hay, suede, mimosa, cashmere, and sage, iris, leather, and broxen, atlas, cedar, and labdanum. I'm getting more of the cedar now that it's dried down a little bit. But uh, yeah, otherwise, I quite like it. It's probably not my favorite from the line, but I, I don't dislike it. All right, so that's that one. And then I have one more. And this is, somebody asked me about this one the other day, Tanagra, 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 Tanagra. Mmm, oh, okay, very nice, okay. Um, so this is, I think this is more iris than violet, but I feel like there's violet in here as well. It's, there's like a sweetness to it in the opening, in the very opening. Um, almost like a, a little bit of a fruitiness, but I don't think it's citrus. Could be wrong though. Oh, that's beautiful. That is a really nice iris fragrance. I think I'm getting other florals. Am I brave enough to name a floral? <laughs> because I'm probably gonna get it wrong because I always get the florals wrong. But I don't know, is there rose or something? Because, I don't know. I feel like because I'm getting that sweetness and I feel like it might be a bit rosy. Oh, there's a, yeah, what is that sweetness in it? It's really, it's kind of a little bit tart. Mm, 
Oh, I really like that. Okay, I want to know what's in it now because <laughs> it's going to bug me. Um, but yeah, this is really, oh, there's so many good ones in this line. I, I, now I understand why people have been raving about them as much as they have. <clears throat> okay, so what are we looking up to Nagra? Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, okay. So there's tangerine, pear, and freesia in the top. So I guess the, the pear note is what I was picking up. Um, the middle notes are iris, peony, and jasmine. So no rose. Dun, dun. I guess peony is kind of like a rose. Um, and then the base notes are musk, vetiver, and cedar. That is really, really pretty. I think I like that more than Nui Blue as well. Or, yeah, because I do, I feel like this one actually leans quite masculine. Must be the citrus in it, I think. Okay, all right. So, shall I, shall I try and rank them based off my first impressions? <laughs> yeah, so I think at the, in the, in the number six spot, I think I'm going to have Un Air Dapage. I think in the number five spot, I'm going to put Sketch. I really, really like it. But I just, but if I'm, I mean, I, I really like all of these, actually. So to rank them is kind of a, a moot point, if, if you will. So I, I'm just going to pick a, I'm going to pick a spot. This is going, Sketch is going in number five spot, just because I, I guess it's probably one of the least likely ones that I would wear, although I haven't worn it on skin, so hard to, ta hard to say. I think in number four spot, mm, I don't know, it's a real toss up. So in the number four, I either want Tanagra or Nui Blue, which is a bit of a surprise as I'm in such an iris kick at the moment, but I really feel like it's going to be one of these. Right now, I think the Nui Blue is going in the number four spot which means Tanagra is going in the number three spot. Oh, yeah, and then I... Uh, uh. You know what, I switched... The, no, so... Pourpre um, d'Automne is going in the number three spot just because it's sweetened up quite a bit on the card and as much as I love it, I don't think I love it as much as Tanagra as my first impression. So, okay, so Tanagra is in number two and then Compliment is in number one spot for me. Wow, it's so pretty. Yeah, I really like that one. Okay, so what was it? Un Air Dapage is number six. Sketch is number five. Nui Blue is number four. Pourpre d'Automne is number three. Tanagra is number two, and then Compliment is number one, just based off my first impressions here today. All right, okay, so stop rambling. Thanks for joining me. Let me know if you've tried these and what your favourites are, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.